South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. I'm Jeannie D and this is Afternoon Express. So a couple of minutes ago, my producer runs to me and says, look, we're going to need you to open the show talking about the elections in the United States and President Donald Trump. But please try and do it without swearing. So basically, I have nothing to say. <laughs> but welcome to the show. One American woman who isn't at home to see the chaos unfold is our guest for today. Her name is Dr. Melanie Joy, and she coined a term, carnism, which is essentially the opposite of veganism. She's in South Africa sharing her message around how humans treat animals and how that should change. It should be a really, really eye-opening eye interview, so stick around for that. Plus, we're chatting men's health on the show, but Danilo, has more on that. Yes, and I'm pretty nervous about this one because I don't know when last I've been for my men's health check. When have you been for like your overall check with your, your glucose levels, etc.? Twice a year is a good, a good, I go twice do, a year. Do you go twice yes, a year? Yes, I do. I've never been before. So today, live on national television, I'm going to get one of those needles to prick my finger to go and test my glucose levels. Not with that, oh. with a legit one. Not you, right. Clem. We've got the original experts with us in the building today. So looking forward to finding out more about that. And gents out there, it's going to be an interview not to be missed because if you aren't aware of what it takes to kind of go for your checkups regularly, we'll be sharing all those details with you later on on the show. Also, know you've got a really cool recipe up your sleeve today. Um, do you want to kind of give us a sneak peek teaser? Sure thing. It's the middle of the week and we all need some amazing middle of the week a meal solution. So today with Woody's, I'm putting together perfect Wednesday meal. Okay, well, we're going to try and do this. I'm going to challenge you to try and see if you can do the entire recipe in just one second segment on the show. You know me, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted all the time, so it's one of the simple dishes you can make for dinner. We need to soon head over to Jeannie on the couch with our first guest. But what I'm going to say about this recipe is that Clem has made a recipe to trump all other recipes. Not funny, Danilo. <laughs> Today we are joined by Dr. Melanie Joy, who is the founder of an American organization called Beyond Carnism, which aims to transform the way we as humans are conditioned to see animals and the way in which we treat them. This is all based on the term carnism, which she coined in 2001. And she's currently in South Africa to raise awareness around the topic. If you hear, it means you didn't vote. <laughs> um, actually, I did vote, and just for the record... Oh, amazing. <laughs> I didn't vote for him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, welcome to South Africa. It's your Thank first you. time here. Thank you, it so, is. So, has it been amazing for you so far? It has been amazing. I have been talking about carnism on five continents, and this yeah. is my sixth continent. I'll be... Um, and, and it has been a really great experience for me. I didn't know what to expect, and I've been just... I've been so warmed to, to experience the authenticity yes. and the openness and the compassion of, of so many South Africans that I've met and Good. the real recept receptiveness to this message. So let's get into it. What is carnism? Well, the best way to understand carnism is through an example. Um, imagine that you're a guest at a dinner party and your host serves you a delicious beef stew. Yeah. And when you ask for the recipe, she says that the stew is actually made of golden retriever meat. Yeah. Now, your reaction is an example of carnism. Carnism is the invisible belief system that conditions us to eat certain animals but not others. It's why we can feel connections with our dogs and cats, and yet we eat pigs, chickens, cows, and other animals without actually thinking about the fact that we're eating a once living sentient being. Yeah. So you wrote the book, Why We Love Dogs, Eat, Ca eat Pigs, and Wear Cows. Mm -hmm. uh, that obviously raises a lot of internal questions. I mean, I eat red meat every now and then, and when I saw that, I immediately got full-on Catholic guilt. Mm -hmm. What was your study and your reason behind it? Well, my reason was really motivated by my own experience. Like so many people, I grew up with a dog who I loved. I mean, I certainly cared about animals, and I, I cared about justice, yeah. and I would never want to contribute to, you know, completely unnecessary and intensive animal suffering. Yeah. And yet I also grew up eating meat. And it wasn't sure. until I got sick a long time ago in 1989 when I was 23, so I'm 50 now, so that was a long time ago. Um, I got sick from You look eating... really good for 50. Is, is that well, what veganism like, does? <laughs> because then I'm in. <laughs> It helps. It makes a difference. And, and I'm, I'm definitely healthier now at 50 than I was when I was half my age. Wow. And a lot of that I know is due to my diet. Amazing. Um, so thank you. After I got sick, I just, I, I was disgusted by meat and I stopped eating it and I became a vegetarian sort of by accident. And yeah. I wanted to learn about my new diet. And what I learned about animal agriculture shocked and horrified me. But yeah. what shocked me even more was that nobody I talked to wanted to hear what I had to say. You know, they would just say, don't tell me that you'll ruin my meal. 
And so I was curious about how rational, compassionate people could just stop thinking and feeling when it came to eating animals. And that was what led me to discover um, what I came to name carnism. It's uh, the invisible belief system that distorts our perceptions and yeah. disconnects us from our natural empathy toward farmed animals yeah. so that we eat animals without realizing that we're acting against our deepest values. Wow. It seems like such a broad topic, though. How do you even start a study like that? Like, how do you conduct something like that? Um, well, I was, I, I did a lot of research when I was in graduate yeah. school. I wrote my um, doctoral thesis on the psychology of eating meat and so I interviewed vegans and vegetarians and meat eaters meat cutters butchers and, and people who had raised and killed their own animals for food and what I found was that everybody I spoke to had the same experience of eating or butchering animals and that was where they said I just don't let myself think about it or they would distort they would you know think for example of farmed animals as not having any personality or individuality of their own yeah. a pig is a pig and all pigs are the same so so, and what's really interesting is that these same psychological defense mechanisms, as they are, mm. that enable us to disconnect so that we can eat other animals are the same psychological mechanisms we use to turn away from atrocities that are happening to humans as well. Yeah. But the thing is, like you said, if somebody has to tell you that you're eating golden retriever in mm -hmm. your stew, at the same time, what happens? It's the same kind of thing. She tells you that you're eating a lamb stew. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a, a baby animal. But, I mean, what is it that's made people so desensitized to hearing these things? You know, well, we're born into the system that's carnism. Carnism is, is dominant, and that means it's invisible. It's, like, yeah. woven through the very structure of society. So it shapes norms, laws, beliefs, behaviors, etc., and it's built into all of our social institutions. So yeah. when we study nutrition, for example, we actually study carnistic nutrition. Okay. We absorb this carnistic mentality from the moment we're weaned. So in other words, we learn to look at the world through the lens of carnism. And so what my organization does is raise awareness of carnism. So when people recognize these defense mechanisms and the way they've basically hijacked our brains, our yeah. rationality, we can separate ourselves from that. We can reconnect with our natural empathy. We can make choices that reflect how we authentically think and feel rather sure. than what we've been taught to think and feel. It doesn't really stop only with eating, though, if you consider the fashion industry and the use of, of leather. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about so many different cultural diversities and so mm -hmm. many different cultures that eat different things as well? Like, like for example, the Indian communities that don't eat a cow. Right, but right. other things. Well, so what's really interesting is that the type of animal consumed changes from culture to culture. Yeah. Um, but in, in meat-eating cultures around the world, people tend to learn to classify a small handful of animals as edible and all the rest they think of as inedible and often disgusting and offensive to consume. So sure. even though the type of animal changes, people have the same experience of eating animals, right? So, for example, you know, uh, Americans um, and South Africans are disgusted at the idea of eating dogs, um, whereas in some places in Korea they're not. Um, yeah. Hindus are disgusted at the idea of eating cows, and, and we do that. So it's exactly the same mentality, it's just that the types of animals change. This is such a fascinating topic of discussion. Thank you so much for being here. Thank but you're you. going to stay on the couch. We've, we're going to touch on this a little bit uh, later. But first, here's Danilo. Sure, it is a really fascinating conversation. I think a lot of people are going to get riled up for their own personal beliefs and systems, and whether it be cultural, whether it be religious, for all other purposes. So I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are on this topic. I think personally for me, it's really exciting to see what you guys have to say about these topics, because like I said, there are going to be so many different viewpoints. And so what I want you guys to do is head over to our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. You can find us there. Uh, share your comments with us on these topics. What do you believe about what's being shared on the couch at the moment? We'll share more after the break. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. If you've just joined us, we are having a super interesting conversation about the term carnism with psychologist Dr. Melanie Joy. Welcome back. Now, there's, there's such a huge movement at the moment that I've been noticing and reading up in the media. Leonardo DiCaprio is campaigning for it, um, Sir Richard Branson, David Attenborough, and they are campaigning for a movement towards the 
end, the total end of beef consumption. What do you want the, the end goal to be? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the vegan movement is one of the fastest growing movements in the world today. More and more people are waking up and um, realizing that eating animals is bad for their health, it's bad for the environment, and it certainly is bad for the animals. And so I would like to see, and I believe this will happen, this trend continue. People, you know, don't necessarily have to go 100% vegan to be a part of the solution. Yeah. It's really important to just think about where you are on that continuum and commit to heading in the right direction, reducing and ideally sure. one day then eliminating your consumption of meat, eggs, and dairy. It's a really difficult thing to explain though because how do you go to cultures that have been eating meat and wearing leather for for years and years and years and all of a sudden change their entire perception mm -hmm. especially if i think of south african culture south african is a very very big meat eating country how i mean how would you even begin to send that mm -hmm. message and spread the word of don't eat meat go for the broccoli instead no biltong for you well, um, I, I live in Germany now, and Germany is a very big meat-eating country. It's you know, yeah. meat is very much a staple of mm. German culture in many ways. It's also one of the most vegan, uh, vegan-friendly countries in the world. Um, just about anywhere you go, people know wow. the word vegan, and there are lots of vegan options. And sure. and the same thing is happening in many places, including right here in South Africa. And so it's not simply about saying stop eating meat today, but rather about getting people to really think about where their food has come from, committing to learning. More and doing um, like crowding out food as opposed to just cutting out food, bringing more healthy foods into yeah. the diet, plant-based foods into the diet, and slowly moving toward veganism. You have, you know, here in South Africa, I've been sponsored to come here by Fries, which is a, a company that makes fabulous meat alternatives. They're yeah. meaty foods like chicken nuggets that taste just like meat, but they're made from plants, so they're yeah. healthier and they're better for the environment and the animals. Like we've got initiatives here, like Meat Free Mondays and stuff, but you. You've got an organization mm -hmm. called Beyond Carnage, not Carnage. Carnism. Carnism, Beyond yeah. Carnism. And what kind of response have you received so far, globally, I suppose? It has been an overwhelmingly positive response. The, the Most people say, why didn't we learn this before? Why did nobody tell me this? Not, why is it that I grew up, spent my whole life, and nobody ever asked me if I wanted to eat animals or how I feel about eating animals, if I believe in eating animals? Yeah. It was just the way things Thrust are. You. Yeah. you know, So it's an overwhelmingly positive response, and it really gives me a lot of hope because most people really do care and that most people are hungry for authenticity, more authenticity in their yeah. lives, to, to feel like they are living as the kind of person they really want to be. Exactly. So, and I mean, you look at you, you are the perfect poster child for it. <laughs> Just you. looking at your skin and I'm going vegan, it's happening. <laughs> now, what is your itinerary looking like while you're in South Africa and where are you going to be doing these talks? Oh, I was in Joburg um, up until yesterday yeah. and now we're um, doing interviews and then tomorrow night, Friday night um, here, no, not tomorrow night, Friday night in Cape Town. I'll be talking at 6.30 if anybody is interested. Um, we, I'll be giving my presentation on carnism um, here and I'm trying to think of, if you go to Meat Free Mondays South Africa on their Facebook page, you can get tickets to that. Amazing. Um, yep, and then I'll also be in town Saturday and Sunday and get a chance to see the beach, hopefully. Yes. And people who want more information about Carnism can visit us at carnism.org. Amazing. And of course, we'll put all of those details on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There's so much to do and see here. And actually, we are a very, very good foodie country. So you're going to find a lot of places to go that offer amazing vegan options. I have already been experiencing <laughs> that. And it's been fabulous. Good for you. Thank you so much for all of the work that you're doing. It really has been, you know, just reading up on you. It's, I mean, it's been amazing. Good luck. Thank I you. I think it's an amazing initiative. And I'll join whatever Leonardo DiCaprio asked me to join. So I'm in. Thank you so much. We'll talk to Thank you a little you bit so later. Much. Over to you, Dan. Mm, sure. Such fascinating comments coming through on that couch. I think a lot of people are reiterating what the doctor is saying uh, as they're listening to and, and commenting on our Facebook page right now. So thanks for all your comments on Facebook, Afternoon Express. I just want to run through a couple of those uh, questions questions and comments that have come through. Some of them are quite controversial, some of them quite relaxed. Um, but obviously Vicky saying it's a very interesting topic. Um, here one from Boy Tumelo says, Hi Melanie Joy, animals eat meat themselves. In the wild it's survival of the fittest. So are animals also hiding their empathy in order to eat meat? Interesting point uh, raised there Boy Tumelo, thank you so much for that one. Uh, Rishi says, Veganism is not about giving anything up or losing anything, it's about gaining the peace within yourself. Um, Craig also says, I'm totally enjoying the show because I'm 
I'm a vegetarian and I'm really proud of the questions that Jeannie's asking and getting those answers, so thanks for that. Um, uh, Yulenda also says, I love meat and I don't see anything wrong with us eating killed animals. Also sharing his thoughts there. Also saw another comment that came through another one of the posts to say, you know, generally speaking, uh, we learn these things from our parents and I don't necessarily think it's time for me to change right now. Or it's, I'm, I'm not able to change right now in my viewpoint. And I wonder about that question because I think people are able to change at any point during their lives if they see information like this. After the break on Afternoon Express, I'm gonna get my finger pricked to learn more about glucose testing. So men, stay tuned. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're focusing on your health and well-being and now we're turning our attention towards men. Most men only visit the doctor when something's wrong. Me. But regular health checks are more important than we realize. When was the last time that you went for a health check? We find out from some people on the street. It's been a long time, you know, last, I think last year. I haven't been in a while. About a year ago. I haven't had a health check before. I think about two, two weeks ago. The last time I went for a health check was the end of August. June this year. Because I'm relatively young at the moment and I don't feel any, you know, of the side effects of high cholesterol or anything like that, so I don't find it necessary. It's difficult for me to go for a health check because every day I'm at work, I don't get an off day. Studies, work, neglecting myself. As a man, we're scared of going to a health check to see how our state is kind of like that. My cholesterol level is uh, minor, I think it's on eight. If I'm correct, that's also about seven. I'm actually not sure where my cholesterol reading uh, is at the moment. Everything was normal, my cholesterol, my blood pressure, my blood sugar, because I'm on this medication since having this, this heart bypass, you see. I didn't do a glucose check up about a year or two ago. I've never had a glucose check before. It's important just because you, have, you need to keep your body healthy, you need to make sure that you're strong, you don't, don't have any sickness. At the end of the day, you want to live a longer life. Um, you want to make sure you're able to get up in the morning, no problems, no aches. Um, yeah, you just want to feel like a proper, like, working human being, yeah. The more time that we're on Earth, the more time we get to spend with our family, you know? It's life is so short and it's about appreciating the small things in life. I never went for regular tests and I'm positive that if I did, then I would have avoided all this uh, uh, stroke and this bypass, heart bypass. It was a major heart bypass, yeah. No pun intended, but man, oh man. I know myself and I wasn't surprised by any of those comments. I actually can't believe how many people haven't done their health checks or can't remember when their last health check was. So today we've got clicks and nursing practitioner Alistair Smith with us in the loft to explain why regular health screenings are absolutely essential. Were you shocked by some of those answers? Why should people go? Well, regular health checks helps to early, it helps to detect for warning signs early, mm -hmm. especially if you're overweight and you have a family history of heart disease. Okay. It, and it takes about 10 minutes. So it's not one of those long, tedious things no. like taking your wife shopping? No, <laughs> not at all. And it basically just includes your blood pressure, blood glucose, cholesterol, okay. and your body mass index. What exactly is the relationship between like your glucose levels and blood pressure, for instance? And why don't we check those two? Well, if you, are, if you have a high bad cholesterol, it increases your risk of heart disease. Mm -hmm and it, which can lead to stroke and heart attack. Okay. I always felt, like when I'm going for these tests, that there was a way to cheat the system or that there was something that I could do to prevent myself from getting the worst readings possible. Um, so I first of all want to get some tips from you around people at home. What can I do on a daily basis to prevent myself from having bad cholesterol, bad blood pressure uh, and, you know, glucose levels that are skyrocketing? Well, basically it's just regular exercise, following a healthy diet, decreasing smoking and alcohol consumption. Okay. And on the day, what can I do to make sure my readings are as accurate as possible? Like, well, is, yeah, if I don't, miss, am I, if I eat a sugar sweet or something, will I get yeah, in trouble? No, just don't eat something an hour before the test, okay. basically. Okay, well, I've eaten about two hours, hour and a half before this test. Okay, cool, so we're going to be okay. Do you mind doing the test for me, like live television? I've never done it before, and I thought this was maybe a good step to get me into the process. Yes, then, you know, let's cool. check yours. Let's do it. So what is this going to entail? Oh. Well, basically, it's just, a, it's just a finger test we're doing. Okay. 
And you can do it simply like at a store. It doesn't have to be something you have to go with crazy amounts of machinery and get undressed and no, all that stuff. No, basically I'll just check this takes 10 minutes to do. Okay, cool. So you make me nervous here, Alistair. Cool, so just gonna get those gloves on. <laughs> Always <laughs> makes me nervous. You must do it properly, like with that, like, make it snap. Not at all. Cool, and it's a little device like that, so simple. And one of the other tests that people always find that they dread is the prostate exam. And I think that's one of the things that young adults particularly are not too sure of when they should start going to get those checked out. Um, so I want you to share some thoughts with us on that, but let's get this done in the meantime. Okay, just turn your finger for me, a small prick. Oh, okay, that wasn't too bad at all. Thought nothing. Made more of a noise than it did anything else. Cool, that's all. Enough glucose in there, so that was enough blood. Let's give you a swab. Swabby. And what does it say, Doctor? What is the verdict? Well, it's 4.6. Okay. And considering you're eating half an hour before the show, that's pretty good. Okay, so what should it be? What should we be looking out for? What kind of uh, results should we be Well, getting? any reading above 9 on is, any given day. Is a, is a worry? Yeah, it's... It's the beginning of a war, okay, bigger cool. problems. Okay, so I'm safe, yay, <laughs> on national yeah. television. I find out that my health checks are good and I should go regularly again, once every four months, you said, or so? Yes. Once every four months, we'll get this checked out. You what can about... do it twice a year. Okay, and the prostate exams, what about those? I think everyone gets nervous about it. Are there new ways besides the old school <laughs> method? Yes, there is. It's a simple finger prick test. As well? Yes, and it takes about 10 minutes to do. It basically just tests for prostate-specific antigen. Okay. So it's using your blood as a way to detect what's yes. inside your blood to find out what's going on with your prostate. What's really cool is Ben Siller just came out to say that he had prostate cancer. If he didn't go for his tests regularly, uh, it wouldn't have would have saved his life. And he's managed to save his life. So uh, really cool to learn this information from you. I feel like I'm now under pressure. I must make sure that I definitely go get myself yeah. checked out. So thank you so much for joining us on the Pleasure. show. It's such an honor to have you. Over to you, Jeans. Now, we all love hot showers and long baths, but with a lot of water and humidity comes mildew. So we chatted to a cleaning expert to find out exactly what's the best way to get rid of mould. Nashanu, you brought me to this apartment to show us how quickly mildew can grow if we don't look out for the warning signs, right? So where in our bathrooms is mildew most commonly found? In your bathroom you can find it most of the time growing on your roof, just above the shower, um, also above the bath, wherever the steam from your water rises, on your walls, um, in the tiles, in the grid of the tiles, also at the bottom of the shower door, very common area. And sometimes you, you get some mildew around the taps as is well. Is that what that is? Yes, it is. <laughs> So Shana, what is it about this bathroom that's likely to cause mold? Well, in this bathroom you can see there's absolutely no ventilation. There's no window in sight. The steam's rising. You're just getting all this moisture up here, which has already created a whole lot of mold here. Um, you'll see in the walls as well, on all these cracks here, there's a whole lot of mold that's growing over there. Mm -hmm. This is the only form of ventilation in the bathroom and it's just appalling for this size. Mm -hmm. So when someone is using this bathroom and then they close the door, there's just moisture going to be everywhere. There's going to be, there's going to be no ventilation to, to dry up that moisture. Absolutely. What are the do's and don'ts of how we should or shouldn't clean mildew? Well, definitely once it's developed into your, your big green mold, don't scrub on it um, because your mold is a living organism and it splatters everywhere and then wherever that touches, if you haven't killed it, it's just going to regrow. So definitely don't scrub. Spray whatever you need to spray onto it and leave it there for a little bit so that it can kill your, your mold dead. Right, so what can the owner of this bathroom do to prevent mildew growing in future? Well, first of all, we're definitely going to have to get all of this living organisms that is around here off. Uh, we need to kill all of the bacteria, and then once that's gone, he can do things like keep the door open straight after he's had a bath or a shower so that we can have some ventilation in here. Maybe get a specific towel that's designated for your bathroom and just wipe on your on your, your tiles and perhaps just wipe on the ceiling so that you're just getting all of that, that moisture, you're drying it up. Because as soon as you just, if he leaves all this moisture in, yeah, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. Well, there you have it. I hope you feel more educated as to how to keep your bathrooms mildew-free. 
Now, mould and mildew is a very common problem, and if you don't take care of it, it will spread and cause unwanted health hazards. So make sure to keep your bathroom clean and germ-free. If you want to stand the chance of winning a Mr Muscle product tamper, all you have to do is SMS Mr Muscle and your name to 33650. T's and C's apply and are available on afternoonexpress.co.za say knowledge is power that's why I'm so excited that I managed to get myself my glucose test for the first time and I'm really excited to see that you guys are asking some important questions on Facebook too so if you haven't yet gone to our Facebook page it's afternoon Express we'd love to hear from you uh, our, our well, Alistair sent a well did a little prick test on my finger to find out about my glucose levels and we'll also do blood pressure for you guys very simply and two comments that I want to read out one was from Sir Avile Laguva who says most men never visit health facilities due to not wanting to be scrutinized and diagnosed all the is perpetuated by the fear of knowing. And I think I completely agree with you. It's rather not know, and when it's only crisis time, do we want to try and fix that? And then uh, Chenolo says, very interesting, can one go do that test at clicks? And the exact answer for that is absolutely you can. Uh, and Sylvia, well, Alistair and the team that side will be able to do these simple tests for you. Uh, and it's really, really simple. It's Diabetes Month as well, and clicks want to make sure that you have your health in check. So don't have your medical aid on you necessarily, or you haven't signed up for medical aid, no stress. For the month of November, clicks are offering free blood glucose screenings in all Clicks clinics funded by the Clicks Helping Hand Trust. So make sure you make your appointment now. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to the Fresh Pack Natural Goodness series. Every day we need reassurance that we're making healthy choices for ourselves and for our families. Fortunately, with the natural goodness of Fresh Pack, you know you're doing just that. We've spoken a lot about good nutrition and losing weight, and today we're looking at the importance of exercise. One of the first things we do when we start an exercise program is to join a gym. But how do we know our routine is giving us optimal results and we're clued up with the current exercise trends. Well, joining us in the garden today is fitness expert and personal trainer to many local celebs, Bruce Benjamin. But before we get into it, I recently joined Bruce in the gym for a workout and some exercise tips. Take a look. So Bruce, what should a complete gym workout consist of? Complete workouts at the gym should consist of resistance training and cardiovascular training. Obviously resistance uh, to shape and tone the body and also it brings about a degree of calorie expenditure as well. Cardiovascular, more for the heart conditioning, so good for your overall body physiology. The trends in the fitness scene are always changing. What is the latest trend when it comes to working out at the gym? Gosh, I mean there, there are so many, but I think uh, what stands out is the functional training, um, calisthenics using your body weight. Um, it's um, the old PE exercises, if you will, you know, we did it back at, at school, a lot more dynamic, um, but very, very similar to those which you can practically perform anywhere. What are the common mistakes that people make when they start training? Well, common mistakes, I think, is uh, correct form. Um, obviously not going through the correct ra ranges of motion with your, with your muscle groups, that's um, number one element. And then also just general posture as well. So. Uh, preventing risk of injury, but also getting the maximum out of your body is focusing on exercise form. Please take us through the benefits of having a personal trainer. The benefits of having a trainer is that uh, we are so bombarded with media and the influence on what the path uh, should be, um, where if you're with a trainer, you can streamline something very specific to you, and um, whether it be weight loss or increasing muscularity, working with your body type, your strengths or your weaknesses. So. Uh, certain things that might be common knowledge to us might not be to the next person, but that's what they can do to streamline that, that process for you. Well, welcome to the loft, Bruce. Right. Lovely to have you with Thanks, us. Um, yeah. yeah, that was quite a punchy workout, that. Huh? Yeah, pretty Short, intense. but quite yeah, effective. effective. Very effective yeah. <laughs> Bruce, how important is diet when you're gymming and to make sure that you have enough energy and that you can reach your weight loss and muscle building goals? Gosh, it's imperative. Um, obviously, the initial starting block would be uh, your training regimen, but in order to make a progress and take yourself or your body to the next step, whether it be a weight loss scenario or strength and conditioning scenario, then um, the nutrition side is, is key. Um, from building up muscle fiber to reducing carbohydrates, um, yeah, very, exactly. very important to take yourself to another level. Right. And how important is hydration? Hydration, uh, it is crucial. Despite the fact that we expend water on a day-to-day -day basis just through normal um, functional work and exercise, um, there's an intensified level of perspiration that takes place 
and breathing where we emit a lot of um, our oxygen as well and put, yeah. put H2O. So it is, it is key to rehydrate best before the session as well. Um, as opposed to a lot of people tend to play catch-up during the course of the session, but hydrating before a session, very, very important. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people who work out seem to think that energy drinks or sugar drinks give them yeah. energy. Yeah. How effective are they or well, not? It has got a, a negative effect to a degree. Obviously, you get a bit of stimulus in that initial part of the workout and you get that heavy energy drop as well. But that can also affect your dietary patterns. So when you get a high glycemic spike, um, with any of the stimulants or the sugar the content that you take in. Um, it can set up a pattern where your body seeks out the same kind of food during the course of the day. Mm. And that, that's the, one of the primary things that lead to a weight increase because you, you load your body constantly with those high glycemic sugars as well. So um, for me, it's a bit of a negative. Um, it doesn't give an authentic um, showing what you, of what your body can actually do. And um, yeah, I'd rather go the more natural route. Yeah. And what would you recommend as hydration? Um, as hydration, gosh, I mean, obviously H2O is, is crucial, mm -hmm. but then obviously you can make a, a fresh pack robust iced tea variation as well, which I love during summer now and kind of mint infused. And there are several antioxidants within this drink itself. So mm -hmm. for somebody that's a starting individual or somebody that's training frequently, replenishing the body's nutrients and muscle fiber um, is very, very important, yeah. and you've got all these elements within that. You mentioned caffeine as well. So, obviously, the fresh pack um, teas, they, they're fantastic because they don't contain any caffeine, and um, just allowing your body to perform naturally and become a lot more streamlined. Mm. Thank you so much. I'll sure be joining you Thank again you. for a workout soon. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fresh Pack Roy Boss is all about choosing the healthy way. Whether you choose the classic range or the many flavoured or herbal options, it's easy to enjoy all the beneficial antioxidants, no caffeine and of course the natural goodness of Fresh Pack Roy Boss. And it's delicious served hot or cold. If you'd like to win a Fresh Pack hamper consisting of a selection of delicious teas, SMS the keyword Fresh Pack your name and city to 33650. SMSs are one rand fifty each, teas and seas apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Until next week, keep yourself and your family happy, healthy and enjoying life with the natural goodness of fresh pack mm -hmm. Well, winning doesn't stop there. What are your top summer must-have items? So for the guys, is it your board shorts, your shades, your sunscreen? Well, to stand a chance of winning a Dettol Even Toned Summer Hamper, we asked what your must-have items are for the perfect summer holiday. And here's what some of you had to say on our social accounts. Uh, Leila Basha says, My summer must-haves, my Dettol Even Toned Soap to keep my skin clear and oil-free of blemishes, as well as my Dettol Wipes. Can't go without it. My hat and sunglasses, water to stay hydrated in the hot summer day. Thank you, Dettol SA and Afton Express, for your summer tips on how to stay fresh and have glowing skin for summer. Love your show. A really, really cool pick there. Love that hat. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Leila. Great pick that you sent there. Uh, one from Kerry Lee Avis, who says, For the hot and humid Durban summers, you always got to be ready for a spontaneous trip to the beach. These are a few of my favorite summer beach items. I want to zoom into some of those to have a look. There they are. So you've got some sunscreen in there, your Dettol Even Tone Soap, your uh, lip ice that you've got there, and some flowers. Flops, shades, really cool. Thanks for sharing that one with us. Uh, Mariki Fantonda says, hashtag keep it even, hashtag Dettol even tone. Afternoon chat, uh, tree for shade and my Dettol even tone. Keeping it nice and simple. I love it. Back to nature, back to simplicity. Love seeing your pictures that you've sent through. So thank you so much to Mariki and everyone else who's sending through all of their pictures. Don't forget to keep them coming through. Uh, we will, if you only have until Friday, basically, to enter for this competition. So make sure you hurry up and have, head over to our Facebook page immediately. And for more details on how to win, here's how. Keep it even this summer with Dettol Even Tone and you could win a fantastic summer selfie hamper, including Dettol Even Tone products, an LGX cam phone, and the Striker Pose selfie stick. Everything you need for the perfect summer selfie. To enter, simply post a picture of your must-have item for the perfect summer. The competition closes on the 11th of November. T's and C's apply and are available on afternoonexpress.co.za.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. You can put your phones down. Do not worry. We are still going to be cooking on Afternoon Express today. I set a really cool challenge to Clem to try and see if we could get an entire recipe wrapped up in one segment on the show today because often we always feel like it sometimes can take too long. And so we really wanted to do for us today is to try and see how quick and simple creating some of the recipes that Clem com comes up with is. So today, if you want to get all the details for how to make what we're making on the show today, it's a little bit of a surprise that Clem's got up his sleeve. You've got to SMS the word PI to 33650. It'll cost you one rand fifty. And free SMSs do not apply. So now you may pick up your phones and send through that SMS to get all the details. And also time me, pick up your phone, put on timer, add, go. No. But okay. the thing is, it was really funny because I even said it was uh, like, well, you, you, uh, it was a secret, but I even said you could SMS the keyword pie. So I kind of gave it away. You did. Sorry. But maybe we're we, making pie, maybe, maybe we punked them and we're actually making pasta or pizza or Never mind. All right, let's just get going then, Clem. <laughs> so it's Wednesday, right? Mm. Everybody, is, it's halfway through the week. We want to keep things super simple in the, in the kitchen. So today's recipe is actually almost done. It makes itself. Yeah. So we're talking about this amazing chicken pie from Willie's. And you know, when I talk about amazing, it really is. The pastry is super buttery and it is made with butter. Okay. That's the difference. And there's nice chunks of chicken that are in there and it's got an amazing gravy in there. So, I can't stand when you get a pie and there's a chicken pie, but everything's mm. like, it's like mystery chicken pie, because it's a mystery where the chicken actually is in the pie. <laughs> All right? We get more mushroom, you're like, mm, is this actually chicken that? pie? Oh, that's not chicken. <laughs> this is the real deal, and it's followed by a traditional recipe, so basically, it's like you would make it at home. Okay. And that's what you're going to get every single time you open the box. Yeah, exactly, and pies are quite difficult things to make themselves. I mean, creating the different mm. gravies, the sauces and stuff inside. And they've obviously perfected this recipe to the point that it is like mama's pie that she yeah. makes at home just from your Willy store. Okay. So I'm going to show you how easy it is. Dan, so you need to stretch, 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 okay? I'm just getting you're about, to, you're about to prepare your chicken pie. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. So pass me the box. All right. And pass me the pie. That's inside oh, the box. Oh, inside the box. I was like, okay, there's a pie. pie. Where? There we go. And literally, from frozen, on a tray, 30 minutes later, boom. Just comes out looking like that, nice and warm and toasty. And you're looking like a hero right now. I feel like a bit of a hero because no, everyone will know that I didn't make that pie. They'll know. They know me too well to know that my food is never that neat. If I were to make a crust on a pie, I would never come up with little ripples like that on the side. Or maybe people thought that I've learned a lot from the show. I would hope so. Cool. So what are we serving it on the side with? What are we going to so, make with it? A beautiful, beautiful summer crunch salad. And what I really love about it is that all the work has been done and they've incorporated some amazing, funky ways of actually serving the vegetables that are in there. Okay. So it's as easy as, again, Oh, Clem, you're my favorite kind of chef in the whole entire world. Open a packet and dinner is served. Well, when the quality of the product is so high, I mean, why try to mess with it? Yes. So, we've spoken about these beautiful spiralized vegetables. It's so fun, so amazing, especially mm. when you try to incorporate more fruits and vegetables in your diet. To eat something that's got a lot of texture and a lot of flavor, it and really helps a lot. visual appeal. There we go. So, Dan, can you open that one for me? Sure, I can. And it's got some cabbage in there as well, which is really great. So you got the, the soft snap, or the soft crunch of the, of the spinach and the rocket that's in there. And you got that more crunch of the... Oh, ooh, let me see this finesse. Go for it. Oh, I'm gonna try and do this thing. One, two, three. Ah, Beautiful. look at so that. So just like mixing it up a bit, getting all the flavors in there. And we've really got a, quite a few ranges of these. I mean, it they've is. got the summer crunch, which is nice to go with this pie, which is your suggestion, but they've got a lot of other options that you can go with. And, and it's with. up to you to play yeah. around with the flavors and make it your own. Okay. So as I was talking about convenience, the middle of the week, and Willie's have really thought about everything. They've even gone and made the honey balsamic dressing for you. What? So it comes in the pack. All you have to do is snip the end off and just it over. Oh, my I, word. I've kind of just put it, popped it into this little bowl over here. Just that so we didn't feel like, what's the point of having a resident chef on the show? <laughs> 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 so really, ooh, I even got some of the dressing on the pie. You know, that's going to only make it a lot better. <laughs> so we spoke about texture being amazing. We spoke about getting all the nutrients and yeah. making a salad more than just leaves, okay? Yes. So what they've also done is they incorporated a seed sprinkle that you get in the salad as well. Okay. That's another, like, way that they've thought about everything. So this, instead of a crouton, think about this being a crouton, a bit of that crunch and a bit of flavor as well. So simple, simple. I'm not sure, gonna, this is I'm hard work. Look. Don't, even look. Look. Don't even look, don't even look, Clem. Oh, Some skill. Master, okay. master chefing going on yeah, here. So it's, it's really a great way for <laughs> the fact that we are really busy. We all have hectic yeah. lifestyles. And as you want to still produce an amazing meal for your family okay. and not feel like you've just grabbed anything off the shelf. Yeah. Rather go for a product that you know has got time and effort put into it, like these Woolies products. So you're still mm. giving them an amazing home-cooked meal yeah. straight off the Woolies shelf. So what are these potatoes doing here? Because I've noticed you've right. got the salads you just, you've put on the plate there and made mm -hmm. them look delicious, taste amazing. The pie is done and dusted out the oven. So I'm going to talk about real life that happens. So you prepared a meal for four people. Beautiful. Got your pie, got your salad, everyone's happy, but then knock, 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 someone's at the door. Okay. So you got to think really quick about how to bulk up a meal and make it for six or more. So 
another amazing product, the, the I think amazing iconic product, is the Woolies garlic and herb baby potatoes. I love those. I used yeah. to cook these as well because I was trying to incorporate more potato into my diet because I was told not enough of um, not eating enough carbs. So funny, funny that not eating enough carbs. Oh wow. Thought. Um, so they in trying to create. Good ways for me to do that. Mm -hmm. These little potatoes are so delicious with that, that butter that's in there. And it's, uh, the fact that it's got that butter in there mm. and that garlic in there, it's already been seasoned and it's real simple. So it goes straight into the microwave and then it's done. It takes about seven minutes and you're good to go. So you're not taking up extra space on your stove and yes. dirtying more dishes. Cooks in the bag. Lovely. So I'm going to take this already, like I said, a really amazing product. I'm going to just step it up a little bit. So I've got some beautiful capers. Capers have a nice salty brightness oh. to them. And I'm just going to chop it up. This is where you add a little bit of your flair. So you've taken a really good quality product, now you're going to make it your own. Yes, now you're so, going to be showing people that you actually aren't just lazy, but you are creating something delicious. You know what flavors should be combined together. The, I think the best chefs in the world are, it's you and Willie's in the kitchen. I mean, come on, it's, then no one can complain. Everyone's going to be happy. So I like, such a funny one. <laughs> keeping the capers nice and chunky really make a difference because then you can actually taste and chew and the texture that comes mm. from it is amazing. So beautiful honey that's going to go in there. And Dan, um, I'm going to pass you a spoon. How about some mustard in there for me? Sure. Oh, what a nice trick that you're showing people now. I don't know if everybody knows this, but if you are making a salad for people at home, uh, one of the things my aunt once taught me was the fact that you should create all your dressings at the bottom of the salad, that your leaves don't start wilting when it mm -hmm. comes to obviously having... Yeah. I can't even get the spoon that's in here. That's perfect. Well, that well enough? no, that's okay, enough. Cool. Um, yes, good example. So when you add your leaves, when you add anything else yeah. on top of it... You just add on top of it so they don't wilt and, yeah. and, and freak out. With and then lemon olive oil and... goes in, some salt and pepper. You on that. Cool. I'm going to do some lemon juice. Teamwork. Teamwork. Look at us. We, I just should, mix... we should cook in a TV show together. I think that so. Sh that should be our day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just going to mix everything together. A little like bit of lemon? I added lemon while you Oh, were... did you? Okay, cool. I didn't oh, see. Didn't oh. see. Just not focusing, okay? Kitchen Ninja. It's Wednesday. I'm already exhausted. It feels like it should be Friday. And then, Dan, I've got some dill and I've got some parsley and some basil. If you can just break that up and add it to the bowl for me. Sure. In go my potatoes with an extra garlic butter on there already. All of this? All of this? All of it? No, give me some. Pass sure. me some. I was about to say, that looks a bit hectic. It's ooh, like we're going to make a whole ooh. garden out of this. So I like, you can chop it up, but I like breaking it off. So you can get nice yeah. chunks of it. Nice pieces oh, of it. Yum, and the, the uh, aromatics that are coming out of this is delicious. Especially, you yum. should do this while the potatoes are still hot. Mm. That's true. Yeah, we'll that way they absorb the flavor. Them, and, and it'll wilt over it. Yeah, perfect. Dad, I'm impressed. Don't I'm going to give it one like quick that. mix. Yeah, and then I've got a nice dark bowl next to you over there. There you go. So this is a great way, like I said, to take a meal for four, adding another side to it, and that's perfect for six people. So and delicious. you've got amazing, amazing flavors. You haven't substituted on flavor at yeah. all. It's, it's convenience and flavor. So and literally, quality. you're done and dusted within the matter of like, yeah, even less than what it would take you to make a roast or something at home. Exactly. Simple like that. Oh, Dan? Convenience at its best. So if you want to get all the details to this recipe, you can uh, get it on your mobile device. All the ingredients, what is the link to the recipe? SMS the keyword PIE to 33650. That SMS will cost you 1 Rand 15. Your free SMSs do not apply. And if this wasn't simple enough, take a quick relook at how we made it. So I know it's only Wednesday, but technically we're getting you prepared for the weekend, mm -hmm. kind of because it's Friday, pie day was that day. It's a really big thing. I remember all my friends used to eat pie on a Friday. It was like a, it was like a thing we used to do, was camaraderie vibes. Oh, where'd you go for your pies, Dan? Don't want to know. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't as yummy as this. Let's just put it that way. So if you guys want to get all the details, make sure you go and cook this for us and maybe make it over the weekend. It's delicious. Or maybe it's for dinner for you guys for tonight. Tomorrow on the show on Afternoon Express, we're hanging out with Enchle Mbaliem Shotwa. If you recognize that surname, she's an actress and wife to international house music sensation Black Coffee. Plus, she'll be showing us her new pregnancy fashion range. She's an incredible lady. I cannot wait to unveil her story for you guys tomorrow right here live on SABC3 uh, between 5 and 6 in the afternoon. Until then, good night, happy eating, bye. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, Entlem Lochwa, wife of South African music icon Black Coffee, chats to us about her acting career as well as her brand new pregnancy fashion range. So make sure you catch all the style and all the glamour on Afternoon Express tomorrow, live at 5 on SABC3.
Another feel-good production.